Okay, welcome to my 2014 film retrospective. This is an insane year for film. So many great films. I think most people feel this way. My uh, recommendation for honorable mentions is so long that I, I couldn't memorize this. I don't have like, good enough of memory, including Citizen Four, Oculus, Begin Again, Five to Seven, Guardians of the Galaxy, Whiplash, Gone Girl, Grand Budapest Hotel, What We Do in the Shadows, The Raid 2, Nightcrawler, and Birdman. You know, some of those might not be super popular picks, but they're movies that I love, and every one of those I would recommend just about anyone checking out. My favorite bad movie from this year is Wolf Cop. Now this is a movie designed to be bad, but I think it's still bad, and that's why I like it. It's a movie about a man who's a cop in a small town and becomes a werewolf. And it wants to be in that same vein of like Sharknado or um, you know the uh, movies made by Asylum that are just kind of goofy plays on old school you know tropes, but it's still really terrible. The acting is bad, uh, the, the, it's super low budget, and that's why I like it. I especially love the, the costume effects and the makeup effects and prosthetic effects for the Wolfman. They are bad, but they, in a day and age of CGI, especially when there's a really bad Wolfman movie that came out a few years prior with Benicio Del Toro, I like the Wolfman effects in this movie because they do accomplish what they're going for. The movie's hilarious, so weird, and if you are into those weird, campy, kind of trauma-esque movies, I highly recommend it for that reason. My overlooked recommendation is a movie called Lock. This is Tom Hardy showing up again because he likes to take small movies that no one hears about, but he's an A-list actor and he's always really good in them. And this is just him. He's in a car for the entirety of the film, by himself, talking on the phone with people, and you figure out the story as it goes along. It's not immediately obvious exactly what's going on, and there's multiple different points of conflict for him happening in this film that all intertwine between these phone calls, and he nails it. This is not one of my more favorite movies of the year. It's not on my on my uh, honorable mention list because it's very simple and it's not a movie I want to watch over and over again, but I'm glad I've seen it because it's a great exercise in both writing and uh, acting. Also, like the fact they were able to get different camera angles out of it and kind of be visually interesting with it as much as they could was fascinating. And you probably have not heard of this movie, but Tom Hardy is incredible in it. And it doesn't sound captivating because it's just a guy talking on the phone, in the car, but I promise you it's well worth a visit to this movie. And of course, my favorite film of 2014 is The Lego Movie. This movie is insanely good. At the time, I don't think I would have put it at the top of my list, but as the years have gone on, I've watched it over and over, and I love every part of The Lego Movie. The animation is insane. There's a few brief moments you can tell that it's not Legos, you can tell it's CGI, but on the whole, this film is absolutely captivating on its animation because you think you're looking at Legos. They do such a good job of paying attention to detail. It looks like Legos. They capture the stop motion vibe to it. I played with a lot of Legos as a kid and uh, there's so many things in this movie that I, for some reason, had in my big box of Legos. I uh, got my Legos, a lot of them from my older brother grew up in the 80s and the 90s. So he somehow picked up a lot of these things and I had them as well. And so I just visually connected with this film. It definitely had a nostalgia vibe to it for me, but nostalgia is not enough to make someone like a movie five years on. The story is insanely good. I like that there's so many different ways to interpret this film. Obviously it's kind of playing with the uh, chosen one cliche, which I like a lot. I like that it's kind of tearing that down and showing that anyone can be special. Anyone can be, you know, the special can be good. It takes all of us working together. I also think the movie has a lot to say about copyright law that I would really like to make a video talking about that because I think it's there, I think it's in the text. And it's really fascinating. There's a hundred other ways to interpret this film. I also love the way that it uses uh, different, you know, uh, famous characters and famous iconography and imagery for jokes. And it's the first time you ever saw Wonder Woman in a, in a movie. Was this before Dawn of Justice? I think it was. First time you saw The Flash for sure. Um, first time you saw a lot of characters together and it's just so funny and enjoyable. And everyone that I show it to, hasn't probably, a lot of people haven't seen it because they think that it sounds dumb. It's called The Lego Movie, but I show it to them and they are always surprised by how much they like it. It's a movie that I like the more that I see it. And that is my take on 2014. Let's move on to 2015. All right, welcome. Oh, I put it on there, okay. My list of recommended, uh, shoot. 
my overlooked recommendation. I have forgotten what it is. 